Actually, I came to this school the second year after it was built. Really? Yeah. And it's nothing like it used to be. Really? <laughs> yeah, it's so different. Oh, really? So different. So that means old things can get better. I guess so. That's, that's <laughs> We're going to pass these yeah. around, oh, yeah. take a couple. <laughs> Think about if your friends, if you had a friend here with you and you were going to pick a piece of candy for them, which one they would want. We'll just pass them around. You're the lesson chair. Well, scoot, but you well, need to scoot over kind of by the screen so that um, you'll be on the video. We're being video, so we have to smile. Um, welcome, welcome to our um, meeting today, to convention. Um, we hope that y we can answer your questions, um, that you feel that you will feel that it was worthwhile your being here today. I'm Mary Ann Jensen. I'm on the lesson committee. Uh, Julie is on the lesson committee, and so is Ellen in the auditorium. So we're the three people who write the lessons. So. Take it away. We're just going to talk about everything you wanted to know and never wanted to know, but you're going to know <laughs> about the lessons. Marianne's okay. going to tell you just a little bit. Um, Ellen, you know, is our president, and she's been a uh, elementary school teacher, and I have been a high school teacher, and Julie owns. A Dairy Queen. <laughs> there you go. So there you yeah. go. Uh, we all have different backgrounds, uh, but we come together in in writing our lessons. These are a marvelous job. Thank oh, you. Thank you. So much good stuff that it. I just. Uh, it's hard to choose. We're going to talk about that. Yeah, we'll a little talk bit. about that. So, what it takes? How long it takes to write a lesson? When I came on board. Ellen told me it takes about 300 hours to write a lesson, and I wow. thought, oh, you're just not using the internet the way you could <laughs> for research. But she was right. So um, we do a lot of research, and our first research that we do is in the museum. We like to go to the histories of the pioneers that are written by their families. We feel like they are the first owners of the story, and hopefully they have um, told the story correctly. I know in my family, they have embellished some things, so we do sometimes go to second sources for verification, but we really like those histories and other books and locality histories in the museum. So we research there first, then we branch out to the internet, other books, news articles, whatever we can find. Hours and hours and hours of research. Then you condense it into what you think is most important to the story or the topic. And then you have to put your pen to paper and, um, and uh, type it. We hand type it out. And, um, and then we revise our own. We edit it and edit it and go through it with a fine tooth comb and think we found everything that's amiss in it. And then as a committee, we edit. So the three of us and then our curator of the museum edits with us as well. And um, it works great because we're all, you know, the three of us are members of the same faith, right? And our curator is not, and she balances us. Cool. We'll, we'll, you know, I'll run it by her. Is this like too religious? Is this, you know, and, and she is a really good barometer for us. So we use her, plus she is, she knows all the things of editing and she's really, we I turn think, to her. Uh, right now I would add when Julie has mentioned the, the question of faith, we are not a religious organization. Not. We are an historical organization. And so when you're giving your lessons, please remember that, that we're not about religion. Often religion comes into our lessons, but that we're not a relief society. Does that make sense to you? And we don't want to offend anyone by making them think 
Well, we can't. You can't attend because I'm in a Sunday school class, right? You're not a Sunday school. Same. You're not a right. No, no. We no. have to be very conscientious no. of the members, and we'll talk about this a little bit more when we talk about how to give a great lesson. Did you have a comment? Is the curator paid, or is she a volunteer? She is the curator of the museum, so she is a paid employee of the museum. Yes, yes. Um, and we we really tear each other's lessons apart with the most love that we can. <laughs> but but we really do because we want to put our best foot forward and we care about each other enough to critique so that we look intelligent and um, professional and so we do that and and we're all our personalities are so different but we each bring something to the table and and um, but it can be brutal at times <laughs> So then, after the first edit, you make all the changes, and like I said, you're certain when you have done your own edit that you have caught everything, and it's amazing when you go through that you didn't catch everything. <laughs> There's a lot of things that a different set of eyes will catch, or sometimes verification of different things that maybe someone has mentioned in their history. We need to find another source to verify that this really happened when and where a family member said it did. So we make those changes. Then we collect the photos. And um, Claire Olson, who's over the photo department, helps us tremendously with that. And then sometimes we have to find additional sources for photos. Then we have to write the captions for those. And then we send it all to our typesetter who lives in South Carolina or North Carolina? She lives, she lives on the East, East Coast. Really? Yeah. yeah, and she's a member of DUP back there. And so she typesets it for us and sends it back to us. And then we do another committee edit and go through and find all the things, you know, sometimes in the photo captions we've made an error. Sometimes it's as simple as we've spelled a name two different ways on two different pages or in a photo caption. And there are families that can't even agree how someone's name is spelled. So we'll try to provide every uh, version of the spelling of that. Um, and then we um, make the changes, the corrections, then we send it back to the typesetter and she tries to get all of the things that we've corrected and we go back and forth with her just via email, scanning and sending um, until it's just exactly perfect and then it's still not perfect. But we, we release it and then she holds it and then it sent, the curator of the museum does our indexing for us. So she pulls everything that goes into the index. And once that's done and the whole book is done, then ready to send to the printer, we go back and make sure the index is correct, that all, everything that's in the index. So if you, when you have your book, look at the index. We check every page to make sure that the pages match up. So that takes quite a bit of time. And then we compile all of the lessons for the book and then we write a foreword for the book and the table of contents we write and then we usually find a picture for, um, for the book, for the, for the inside introduction um, to the book. And so I'll tell you, um, we look for inspiration, some inspiring painting from the museum or picture to go with it. And this year we just didn't have one. And so I don't typically have a ton of time to spend in the museum and so I um, but I did that day and so I just told Ellen I'm just gonna wander all the floors of the museum and look at every painting in here and see if something strikes me so I found one that I thought was perfect and I, I showed it to Ellen and then she showed me the volume just two years ago that had that picture <laughs> in it and that's how much we move on we move on to the next thing if you ask me what lessons I wrote that are in the book right now, I can probably give you two, but not three. We just put them to bed and, and move on to the next writing. Um, so I continued walking and in the foyer of the museum, I saw a painting I just overlooked right there next to where the docents sit, if you've been in the museum, and it was called Handcart Girls. So I thought, isn't that interesting? One of the lessons about the first five handcart companies and their captains because we hear about two handcart companies all the time, right? And we don't know much about the captains at all. So that was one of the lessons I wrote. Well, here were these girls depicted in it and the one girl's name was in it. So I thought, I'm gonna look her up. She's in one of the companies I wrote about, but we had already released everything. I couldn't 
add her to the lesson and I, and I felt sad about it. But I was able to add her in the front of the book and a little bit of her story. And with my phone, because phones are great now, I was able to take a picture of the painting and send it to the typesetter and she said that will work perfect. So I feel like she was saying, don't forget me, don't forget me, and came that close to missing her. And we have so many experiences like that where, they're, where we feel connected to them, they want their stories told. And that sweet girl didn't want us to miss her story. So, um, but that's how long it takes to produce the book, yes? Is there an index <clears throat> that combines all the lessons that you've ever written? No, there's not a, com <laughs> a comprehensive index of all of the volumes. Of no. all of the volumes? Yeah. All no, the no. no You'd right. have to go by individual you, there, That volume. would be so many years, and it would be constantly added yeah. to it. Yeah. Um, okay, now I think, um, yeah, go for it. You go for you, this. Um, um, you choose your topics. Then. How do we... People will people will uh, ask me. Has it, have you written a lesson about this? Uh, topics that are of personal interest to you. Um, I had my great grandmother's cookbook, and so that was interesting to me. And I wrote a lesson about pioneer cooking. Um, so that's how that happened. Um, we get suggestions from you. Sometimes we don't use your suggestions because one. One reason maybe we, we wrote a lesson about that a few years ago, or there's just not enough material. We have to have at least 45 to 50 pages of material. It will condense down to about a 40 page lesson, but we have to start with roughly 50 pages. I wrote a lesson that we'll be editing next week. It's 47 pages. It will come out to be about 35. So, it has to be a subject that we can get enough material on, that we can do that much research. And sometimes you'll come and you'll say, well, I can, it's a great lesson for 20 pages, but it won't go 40 or 50. So that is a reason that sometimes you may think, well, why didn't they write about this? Well, we may have already written about it or there may not be enough material. Um, and so we might collect that and set it aside when it could be combined with something else to make a complete lesson. So uh, that's how we choose, we choose our topics in a variety of ways. But we've always got our ears open We're for always you know, uh, new topics or listening to people who have something to say. So are you already writing next year's lesson? Yes. yes. What you're doing now? We have October, September's lesson I wrote, and that's all finished. October's lesson was it's all done. Is, uh, Ellen's, wasn't mm -hmm. that, and that's all done. November's we're lesson. We're about to do the first edit. And we're doing her, uh, Julie's lesson. No, we did the first edit. On yours. We're waiting for it to come back to, from the typesetter. And then my lesson is the Christmas lesson for 2024, and that we will be editing next week. And so then we're, all of our lessons by, we have to have all nine of those lessons written by December of this year. Cool. And then we yeah. will, and then we start the indexing process. And then it goes to the printer about March and then it comes to you about May. So does that answer that question? Yeah. Okay. And um, we watch anniversaries of dates and do lessons if there's a big anniversary coming. So there was 175th, the Demi Semi Septentennial of several things. And the and Transcontinental Railroad. So she wrote about the Transcontinental Railroad. I wrote about the Transcontinental Railroad because it was the anniversary. I'm, I'm gathering material to write a lesson on the building of the Salt Lake Temple and the builders of the wow. Salt Lake Temple. But I keep pushing it back so that it will come out to coincide with when the open house for the Salt Lake Temple. So they just announced it's going to take an extra, a year longer. So that one just got pushed back a year so that it will, it will come out in a timely manner. So we watch those. And there are stories that just find us as well and when I came on too I was having trouble getting things kind of I don't know I just told Ellen I don't know how this is going to go and she told me the lessons go where they're supposed to go just just trust and so the very first lesson I was writing I was writing about people that hadn't persecuted the pioneers but had actually been kind to them and I was gathering stories and my sister said oh you have got to write about this steamboat that exploded. I had never heard this story. And so as I started researching that story as just one part of the lesson, 
um, this, the lesson went where it was supposed to go. That story deserved an entire lesson about it. So they go, and um, we just, there are pioneers that want their story told, and I was looking for something for the Christmas program, and I was looking through the pioneer database that the church has, and um, looking for families that hadn't buried a child on the trail. I was looking for a happy story from the trail. And so I was looking through the family list and I found this family of like five little girls and the mom was pregnant. And I didn't realize the mom was pregnant, but I looked at, at the ages and the birth date of the girl was the day before they arrived in the, in the valley. And her name was Echo. Oh. Can you only guess why, oh, yeah. right? Oh. So I presented her story and I wrote it in a poem, in the form of a poem and gave it at, at the Christmas program. And then I thought, now I have a head start for next year's Christmas lesson, right? And so, and so that story kind of found me, but then as I went back into the database and typed in the name Echo, two people named Echo came up. And I was just certain that second name had not been there the year before. And, and so I thought, okay. And I looked at hers. She was in the other handcart company that was stranded and she was also born a day before they came into the valley. But it was like 10 days apart because the two handcart companies came in. So I clicked on her, couldn't find anything. Couldn't find anything. And I thought, why did she jump out at me like that? So I, um, I did more research. I went on family search and found and it said the only paper about her the only information was written by um, K. Page Nichols. I'm like, that's my maiden name. But I don't know her, this woman, K. Page Nichols. So I thought, I'm not related to her then, you know? And so, but I found the paper, on the research paper online, and thought, I'm gonna have to find her to ask permission to use this. And then as I'm reading the paper, it said my wife and I were traveling back from Oregon, and then I realized K is a man. I know him. I just had vision. It was my dad's favorite cousin was this man. So I called my aunt and said, Lois, do you have Kay's contact information? And she said, yes, but you better hurry because he is not well. He's not going to be here much longer. And I was able to get a hold of him. And he said, I have felt for the longest time that Echo wanted her story told. Um, and so my cousin and I are writing a book about their family because she left no, she has no posterity, this girl, Echo, the second Echo. And, um, and I, he said, I, I have felt for the longest time she wanted her story told. And I said, well, can I have permission to tell her story in the DUP book? And he said, yeah, we're going to produce about 80 books for our family. How many DUP books will there be? I said, about 5,000. <laughs> and I said, I'm sure. And I'm not related to Echo. It's through his mother's family. Are you? I am. How I'm are through you? my husband. He, he, she is my husband's great, great aunt. Okay. And she threw the Bible in the yes. family Bible. Yes, and that's in the DUP. And, yeah. and my cousin said, I think she wants to be known for more than throwing the family Bible in yes, the fire. I'm so sorry. that's in one of the things. Anyway, so I was able to get with him and tell Echo's story to a, a much wider audience. And I yes. said, okay, I'm sure your mother and my father and Echo were up there saying, who can tell the story? Oh, I know who can tell the story. So where anyway, is where's... this lesson? It's a Christmas lesson maybe two years ago, I think. I remember. It was, it's um, called uh, Winter on the Trail. Yeah. Is the lesson. Yeah. So anyway. Well, that was a long segue. Sorry. Let's move on. Yes. Anyway, we feel very connected to them. They want their stories told and they find us if we don't find them. Oops. Um, now, our book, sometimes you'll say, why do you write such long lessons? Why, why do we do this? We heard that. <laughs> uh, the books are utilized utilized for more than just your camp meeting. They go to universities, um, they go to research centers. If you notice, every lesson has end notes to it. Those end notes give it verification. They give it authenticity. Uh, none of the books or none of the lessons are our opinion. You know, I believe everything we write has to be documented. And because it is documented, it can be utilized by more than just the camps and the companies. So we're writing to a large and a diverse audience and uh, the reference material goes way beyond your camp. 
So does that answer the question of why do the, you know, why don't you make these short and sweet? Well, for one thing, it takes about 40 pages to cover a topic without making it real narrow. So we cover as much as we can. We get as much information as we can and we want it to be more than just a narrow focused topic. So does that answer your question about why they are so and long? All the groups all across the country, we have DUP groups all over the West Coast, all up and down. I just came back from visiting groups in Canada, Florida, Texas, all over. And they're very diverse in their interests and in the makeup of their own group. So certain things will appeal to some and other things will appeal to others, especially if something in your area is written about. You might say, we already know all about that. We don't, we, we're gonna skip that part. Or you might say, finally, they wrote about us. Let's talk about it. And so, and you have 25 minutes, right? So how do you in 25, 25 minutes? That, that 25 minutes is vitally important. So we feel like we have given you the salad bar at Sizzler, right? <laughs> a million options and your plate is this big. You have a 25 minute plate. You have to choose what fits on your plate that will be delicious to the women. And so you can look at the salad bar and go, why would they put that in there and that in there when all I need is these 10 things? And somebody else would not choose the 10 things you choose. They would choose the other things. And so look at it that way. And also the candy that I passed out, I could have just passed out peanut butter cups but that wasn't necessarily appealing. Everybody took something different out of it. You took what appeals to you. And so you look at it like that. I have, in case the candy that you like was gone when the bowl got to you, I have the whole, I have all of the options up here and you can stay after and have extra. And the same with the lessons, 25 minutes, 25 minutes. But if women are interested in the other parts of the lesson you couldn't give, then they can stay after during refreshments and talk more about it, or they can buy the book. And you know, we're always looking for new members, and um, especially younger members. I mean, we love those of us who are over 55, but especially do we want younger members, and a younger woman will not sit through a 45 minute lesson. Neither will somebody over 55 like me. <laughs> and they I wrote will, it, and um, I don't wanna sit know, through it. They've got other things to do, and. I use the example of my daughter, Sarah. She belonged to a camp in Salt Lake, and she called me one day and she said, Mom, I'm sorry. And I said, well, Sarah, what are you sorry for? And she said, I couldn't stay for the whole thing. She said, the, le the lesson was going on for 45 minutes. <laughs> and I had, you know, she's got a husband, she's got laundry, she's got uh, grocery shopping, she's got a life. And so if we want to recruit not younger members, we have to keep these lessons at 20 to 25 minutes. And we think they're fascinating, we write them. But um, they must stay within that time limit. And we're all guilty, at least I am, of having a lesson go, uh, listening to a lesson that's going on and on. And the person, that, the lesson leader says, oh, I know I'm beyond my time, but oh, it's so, I've just got to tell you this last story. And then what do we say? Oh sure, we want to hear it. Yeah, someone needs the courage to stand up and say, "I'm, I'm sorry, you're, you're t that's the parliamentarian's job, and that's a whole other subject." But someone needs to have the courage to say, "No, no, it, no." We'll, we'll say talk that. about it during refreshments. We'll, we'll talk about it that during refreshments. But we're all guilty of saying, "Oh yes, please tell us that story." We've got, you know, you've already talked for. Mine do. Minutes. Mine do. Keep going. No, I know. Oh, yes, yes. And you know, you say, great, stay after, we'll talk yeah, some You more. love it. You love it when people say, oh, keep going. That means I'm doing a good job. I'm really doing a good job. But please, please end at 20 to 25 minutes. Do you under, do we have any and, questions And the women that? will say, oh, yes, keep going. And then they won't come next month. Then, and and then, so, come on in. Uh, you know, and the, I'm happy for the ones that want us to keep going, but it's not fair to the rest. It's not fair to the other women who think, I, ha I can't sit here that long. Yeah, <laughs> and a lot, of, yeah, go ahead. So I'm on a company board and then the, I can't. So is it the same in the company board? Yes, yes, yes. 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 Uh, in fact, at a company board meeting, 
I'm on a company board too. The lesson leader in a company board meeting should only be taking five to 10 minutes. Oh, wow. All she is doing, all she is doing is introducing the lesson and saying, uh, the Christmas lesson is going to be about, uh, she would be doing this in November. She would say, the Christmas lesson is going to be about Christmas music. And it will be about music that was written during the Victoria, Victorian era. Um, that's it. She does not give a lesson. She does not give a lesson on the company board. She just takes five to 10 minutes max. And I know I'm, I, I hear you because I've been, I've, I understand. <laughs> the suggestion for the kids is you could buy an extra book and then send that around and they can read that at their Absolutely. 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 There are a lot of books, a lot of camps that just rotate the lesson around, um, rotate the books around so that you can, you know, s the rest of the story. Yeah. Yes. A lot of us have a, a luncheon at Christmas time mm -hmm. and you do want a lesson. So I did what you suggested, just five minutes. Now that's for the company. Yes, board. but we I do. Know, but at Christmas time, we, we do don't that. want a lesson. And sometimes in the um, a fall so opening social and a closing social too, we, we do abbreviated lessons. There are some camps that say, oh, we don't even give a lesson that month. So thank you at least for doing the abbreviated one please but yeah. yes but I, please I mean, please give them it's very yes. painful when we hear You're women right. say oh we don't do that lesson i think oh. yeah. <laughs> there went 300 hours of my life which is you know we so. always do the lesson pardon we always do the lesson I'm, I'm happy to thank hear you. it yeah we come on in please come in, in. yeah okay sorry you're just fine yes yeah, sorry come on over so we did something this year, like our closing social. One of the, uh, I don't. One of the vice presidents at our camp had already bought a book. More. Uh huh. And so it's she sixty miles all the lessons. I know. And then we had people could sign up for what lesson they wanted to do, and it was great because everybody. Very. It's something that they mm -hmm. use that but I'm from that was important to them. Yeah, I went to Bound Yeah, just saying, can you do this much with them? Yeah, so we'll, yeah. Was, we'll, we'll, married man. Right. We'll touch on that. If they're interested in it, they'll it's give a better man, lesson, yeah. right? <laughs> um, so how do you keep it to the right length? You don't have to cover every single thing. Please Everybody's going to do it differently. You might, you know, say, I'm going to just one minute about each person, or you might say, this is really the most interesting part to me and I think to my camp and you can dismiss all the rest of it and just focus on one particular part if that that's your you know uh, your privilege as the lesson leader um, time yourself if you say oh I'm just gonna tell this story and you think it will take two or three minutes sometimes it's like ten minutes so you know rehearse that um, you can invite other people to tell a story but be very careful when you turn your lesson over to someone else because they could hijack it and they could take your entire time. So, um, you know, those are the things to keep it. And there are so many dates and names of all the family members and all these things in it. No one's gonna remember that. That's Boring. just in the book. If someone wants Boring. to see, if someone wants to see if their family member was part of it or see what dates or what, that's for, you know, someone to dive a little deeper in, but no one's gonna remember that. So, you know, leave out the parts that, that really aren't um, pertinent. This was what you brought up. You, you can. You can, down. however, every camp needs a designated lesson leader. Now, in my camp, I am the lesson leader and I give every lesson. But we are aware that in many camps, you rotate the giving of the lesson. That's wonderful. We're, we know what happens. However, the reason you need a designated lesson leader in every camp is because someone has to be responsible for that lesson. And if the, one, the woman who was going to teach the lesson wakes up sick and she can't give it, then the designated lesson leader needs, is, the buck stops with her. Then she has to decide who's going to teach that lesson. It would be real handy if she was familiar with it. She'd better be familiar with it. It's not the captain's job. If the lesson leader wakes up sick, 
the not the lesson leader, but the woman who's giving the lesson, if she wakes up sick, it's not the captain's job to come up with the, who's going to teach that lesson. It's the lesson leader. It's the camp lesson leader's job. So she needs to know that lesson well enough that if she had to, she could give it. Does that make sense? And the lesson leader can check in with the person that's giving the lesson, see if they're hung up on anything, if they need help with anything. Yeah, I'm not the lesson leader in my camp, but our lesson leader asks me to give the lessons that I wrote. And so I do that, and it's amazing when I look through and go, oh, that's new, that's new, because I have put it to bed. And so it's fun to refresh a little bit, but I'm also curious what parts of a lesson I wrote a camp would embrace and give. And you know, so. as because of being on the board, we, I mean, when we, when we go to visit, I go to visit um, camps, in my company, within my company up in Brigham City, and I will go listen to three lessons and I never have, I wouldn't recognize it because each camp has chosen something different to tell. So it's like I'm listening to three different lessons. So just pick what's most interesting to you. So what happens if a lesson leader goes too long? Um, if they're consistently going too long, the little stick she get told us about last year looks wonderful. Mm -hmm. there, you know, there are a lot of little there are a lot of little things. You can have a parliamentarian who holds up fingers. I've had this this happen to me. Uh, you can have a bell like a school bell uh, that you ring. Uh, there are all kinds of things. The the kindest way to handle this is to do it in September in your first lesson and say, hey, you know, we went to convention and. Uh, we were told we've got to limit these lessons to 20 to 25 minutes. Uh, are you okay if we ring a bell or if we ha hold up fingers? But we're going to be doing that this year. So, you know, it's not something you spring on them in December. It's something that you tell them, we're all on board. We know we have to do it. Those nasty, mean people have told us that we can't take more than 25 <laughs> minutes. So um, it's nice if you do it in September, then it's equal everyone gets the same speech okay and and like she said you know in our camp we had um like a five that meant you had five minutes left that the parliamentarian held up and then just a smiley face or an arrow pointing down which means sit down now <laughs> and and it sounds that sounds you know very stern but this is the way we said, and this applies to the histories as well. Yeah, the history. Because um, that will hijack oh, If you get a long history, the easiest way to do that is to say, you know, oh, this is so fascinating. We would love to hear the rest of this history, but save it for next month. Yes, or we'll talk more next after. Month. And um, so the way we presented it to our camp was to say, if you promise not to be offended when you are told to sit down, we promise you're not going to offend all of the women in the camp by taking more than the time that's been allotted to you. And that sounded agreeable, yes. I may have missed, what is the time for? 25, history? 20 no, to 25. For no, for history. Oh, for histories, five is to 10? I think it's about 10. 10, 10 minutes. Yeah. I think 10, I have it in a later one. Yeah. 10 or 15, I think you're yeah. right. Yeah. 10, 10 or 15. 15. Yeah. 15 is a really long <laughs> yeah yeah unless i'm related yeah it's a really so long if, if the lesson leader continues you know to do this we need to do some training um enlist the camp captain to help um enlist the parliamentarian or replace when someone says i've been the lesson leader for 40 years and if they tell me and we go for 45 minutes i think oh your poor camp they don't know what to do with you yes I uh, just another question could, could you have the same format for history it's like I think the, the dates are not that important if they're constantly throwing yeah it, and then in you know well, yeah you we'll, know some kind of rules that's like it, that we're gonna, know, we're gonna talk ultimately about that it's too. the choice of the person who's preparing the lesson right. she can bring in she can use if she wants to use dates she's I'm got talking that about on history the yes yeah history. that's her decision okay so, and if a lesson leader is boring, same thing. We may need to retrain. Um, you may need to replace. But this is this is what. How do you I, do that? I don't like. It's very hard. You have to enlist the the camp captain. Okay. You know, and they can say, hey, let's let you know someone but else. There have are a so turn. many. There are creative ways to do that. If you're trying to get rid of a lesson leader, 
<laughs> and, uh, you could say, you know, we don't want to offend. None of us want to offend. We can say, you know, we really need a new music person, and we'd love you to come in oh, and take that job, okay? We would love to give, we don't want to put you out to pasture, yeah. but we've got another job that, oh, you're just the perfect person <laughs> for that job. Good so idea. is that okay? Does that make sense? And, and yeah. so, because this is going to go on YouTube, so if you are somebody watching this on YouTube <laughs> and you think your 45 minute lessons are okay because your camp is different, you're not. Mm -hmm. And we're going to ask you, please, please, please stick to the 25 minute rule. But it makes sense, doesn't it, to you? Mm -hmm. I mean, no, I think sure. we all know. There's too much good stuff. Really good. There is, but, but we have we have camps where every member of the camp is buying a book, yeah, and that's... and if it's presented in the right way, you're going to want to know more. Mm -hmm. So, um, that but that's a really tricky thing. Um, right now, we don't have plans for going digital or audio. Mm -hmm. She it's says never, happen. and I say. That's how I, I, I'm working. the chairman of the lesson committee, and I say, <laughs> you know, we need a new music. <laughs> <laughs> I think you would be perfect. <laughs> well, you know, I, I've been wondering, Julie, why you would be suggesting me. Uh, I know. Good example. But this is, but we do. We, you know, we we're navigating things as we go along, and we're so proud of the women that have embraced technology. Uh, as we had to during COVID, and so we're daughters of the future. Nothing is completely off the table. Do you have to use the lessons out of the book? Yes, yes, yes. yes, yes. yes. Every once in a while, we'll get an email from somebody saying, um, I'm going to give a lesson next month, and I've chosen the topic, blah, blah, blah. What do you have? What do I have? I have a book that has your lesson for next <laughs> you month. You have to give. Yes. If you That's want to easy. switch up, if you want to switch up the order, uh, we're okay with that. We don't love that. I mean, we, we, we really don't. But if you want to switch the order, but you can't switch the lessons. Does that make sense to you girls? Yeah, but trade if you need to uh, for people being out of town. The prices went up last year. Inflation is insane. Uh, we changed to a paper in these that you can write in and it doesn't smear. If you notice that, the first yeah. spiral bound, yeah, it, it smeared. So. Uh, change paper. Um, also, we've said this before. This, if you go to the printer, um, any any person in the world that uses this printer and wants to look at all of the color options for binding and for covers, um, this color is listed as DUP you green. Because <laughs> this was just made just for us, and so is the gold DUP gold. So that's that's our own color. Um, and other people are using it now, but it was created it's just created for us. us. Um, but yeah. Uh, yeah, publishing has increased. You know, we have paid employees in the museum um, that handle the books, the book orders, the delivery, all of that. Um, the typesetter is paid. Setter. Our typesetter is paid. Our curator is paid. And yeah, it, everything was expensive. Paper. You know, we print multiple copies just for our own editing. Um, there's a lot of paper and a lot of ink, and so I don't think you object to the price of the book. Do you? Is it? No, no, it's okay. that's no. reasonable. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. you get you're, you're getting your money's worth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So don't make copies. Um, how many years was it? Two years ago when you ran out of the book? It was three yeah. years ago, three two years, years ago, ago, and one year. Ago. Um, that was yes. the only book that you gave permission to make yes. a copy because yes. you. Yes. Have you got that book back? So at here's all? the next question. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> You're not. We're not going to run out of books, girls. Okay. Not this year. Not this year. We have printed seven thousand spirals and five hundred hardbounds. We're not going to run out of books. This um, was a business decision this year to overshoot to see really how many we need if we could just sell them unlimited. You know, so we will not run out this year, and then next year we'll know where that sweet spot is to not have leftover inventory. As you, if any of you participated in the free books, you know, getting free books, those are 
uh, you know, inventory we've carried and paid storage fees on for years and years and years. And we just, trying to trim costs, we, we just don't want to do that. But it's not good to require groups to give a lesson out of a book that they can't get their hands on. So this, so this year and all ongoing years, we- They make great Christmas gifts, girls. <laughs> you might consider it for your family Christmas party. <laughs> you guys all doing okay with getting the photos online now? No, is yeah. that a struggle? It's a struggle for me to get them from there to, um, I do a PowerPoint presentation mm -hmm. to get it to my PowerPoint. Oh, because they're not JPEG, right? Is that why it won't yeah. go in your PowerPoint? Yeah, it, yeah. I'll make a note of that for maybe sure. Maybe I could talk to you after, maybe. Mm -hmm. Or Mary, maybe Mary Shumway maybe could help me. Um, Claire Olson would be the one, Claire she's Olson. over the photos. Mm -hmm. okay. Um, what I've done at times, and this is a little tedious, is I'll go to the website and I'll just screenshot with my phone oh. the picture and from the website and then email it to myself and then it's a JPEG. And gotcha. then you could insert it into okay. that. We but have done at 10. At 10. Yeah. Okay. We, we're we want to have plenty of time for questions yeah. and answers. Are there any questions that you have that you want to, us to answer before we go on with anything else? Uh, could there be a little teaser for lessons in the legacy? Mm. It seems like lessons are totally I don't anticipate ignored. that. I, There's, by May, we put the whole next year's list of lessons yeah. on the website, so you can see the titles. But not in legacy. No, uh, in, well, the legacy. I but guess we could, we, one but in the, the summer we, issue. In a summer issue, but the the lessons are already in the, on the website, so we wouldn't be giving them any by new information. A, by March or April, they're on the uh, website. They're on the website for the next year. By March or April, because we want the groups that at their May meeting choose what lessons they're going to do mm -hmm. next year. We want them to have those lessons. So by March, they're on the website. So I don't, I don't anticipate, know, but it's not something I've ever thought about. It but. isn't. It's just the uh, in my camp, they don't look at the website. They don't get on the but website. They get legacy. If, um, well, okay. we can con we, we'll, yeah. we can consider it. Uh, they're available to sell. You know, they're available for sale usually in May, and so um, we can consider that. Do you have any other questions that you want she to answer? Um, so twice this year we had to cancel our meetings because of snow. Mm -hmm. What is your preference with regard to the lessons? I mean, we just ended up skipping them, but. As a company board member, I visited a camp where they just gave two oh, short Oh, if lessons. I wrote it, be sure to <laughs> <laughs> I, I know mean, some. It was one of my lessons. <laughs> during, I know. I don't think it was one of yours. During <laughs> COVID, some, some groups sent out an email synopsis yeah. of the lesson. Um, you, could, um, you could do a Zoom meeting but I would say an email synopsis or um, pass around a book if there's extra books. But if you're, you're saying you've got two months where you're not going to meet. meet. And now those months are gone. Oh, yeah, they passed. Then, you know, what you might do is so look at the lessons there and decide which ones are going to be most interesting. Oh, which, could we take two lessons out and know everyone's going to be fine? Okay. So you will have to make kind of an executive decision oh, and decide, well, we're not going to teach yeah, Julie's lesson. I was going to say, so what she's saying is if it's mine, when you're meeting, dump mine and get Mary Ann's. Yes. She had one and then you had her. Um, Our security camp, guard. Uh, Cotton Camp is in Washington, in St. George. We have a FaceTime page. And so they record it. And so some of the elderly ladies are. Oh, that's it's great. It's been really great. You could do, yeah, even Facebook Live uh -huh. if your group has a Facebook page. Yeah. That's where you can get a younger person to join yeah, and do the technology. Girl, for and she you. said, I can do this for you. And it's been wonderful. That's great. You had a question? Yeah. Is is this uh, information going to be on the website? We're gonna we're going to put this video that we're recording on YouTube. Okay. We so hope. All, all and so you'll be able to see the slide. I've got it aimed at the slide more than us. Okay. I'm gonna go. I'm going to excuse myself and go out and I have to meet our speakers. So. And then I'm gonna tell you everything. And then you <laughs> want to be careful. You got to be really careful. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do that. Okay. Oh, she's gonna check. Oh. Anything, yes. anything? How to give a great lesson. Everybody is different. 
and, and use your own style. Did you notice how fancy the bowls were that I handed that candy out in? <laughs> I'm not a fancy person. I'm not fluff. I'm not, but I'm a storyteller. So I'm going to, you know, I'm going to tell a, a great story. So, but each person brings something different to the table. So use your strengths. Some people do like a great, yeah, PowerPoint presentation of the pictures. You know, anything goes, just be well prepared. Um, I'm the historian in our camp. And so I work with the people that are giving the histories and kind of try to coordinate them with the lesson. So when you have the titles for the year, we say, here's the titles. Do, does anybody in this camp have somebody connected to this event or this place um, or actually in the lesson, would you give a history? And if they give like a 10 or 15 minute history, I just got 10 or 15 minutes added to my lesson, right? Because mm -hmm. it's continuity. Or they can give a locality history. Our speaker history. has arrived. I just want you to know. <laughs> oh, <laughs> welcome. This is going to be so good. Ellis Ivory and his wife, oh, wow. he rescued This Is The Place and um, helped create that children's memorial that's there. So It's we, not the one from Tuolo, is it? Is I don't know. Okay. I don't know. He's Ivory Holmes. Yeah, Ivory Holmes. Yeah. So, um, so I coordinate the history so that the history provides continuity. You can ask anybody whether they're connected or not to give a locality history of one of the places in the lesson. That frees up time. And as the historian, the histories, yeah, will hijack your camp time as much as anything. We also had artifacts were hijacking our lesson because the person would give a history of the person whose artifact it was. And so, um, and if you've ever, just like you said, dates and don't read stories, um, when you see somebody, you know, like I'll ask somebody to give a history and they'll say, oh, I really only have about five minutes about this pioneer and I think that's perfect and um, and then when they stand up they have a stack of papers <laughs> do you notice that yeah. and you think oh no surely they're not going to do all of that and then they start right and then they say oh I just can't do justice to the story I'm going to read it right and so I ask the people time yourself when you give that history because you think I'm going to tell a story it will only be a couple minutes and it was 15 and when a woman sits down after giving a 20 minute history if you say, how long do you think that was? Five minutes, 10 minutes. You know, we lose concept of time. But this is how I feel with the lesson. Um, I'm sitting there waiting to give the lesson. Somebody is just going on and on with the history. I'm thinking, okay, we'll forget that part of the lesson. Oh, oh, we'll leave out that part. Okay, forget, you know, that. This is a book that was misprinted. I hope it's so don't worry. Right. <laughs> yeah, but I know. But isn't that kind of how you feel? Well, ditch that yeah. part, ditch yeah. that. Yeah. And so the history can complement your lesson if, if you work with with those people. This one um, should be 10 minutes or 15? 10 to 15, but 10, to 15. 10 is all I ever want. And, and this is what I tell the people when they're given histories. Yeah, we don't need to know the dates. Just tell me why they're a pioneer. What qualifies them as a pioneer? Where they came from? Where they settled? Um, and then tell me the best story in their history. Just tell me a great story. I will remember that. I will not remember all the names of their children. I won't remember what dates they lived in Lehigh before they moved to Orem, before they moved to here, right? I just want a great story. And that will inspire me and I'll remember that. So um, one of my favorite lessons this year, Ellen Jepson gave in our camp, and it was about the silkworm industry. Were you yeah. horrified by that? Yeah. Yeah. If any of you saw the movie Cruella, did you see that? Where she had a dress and she was sewing, I thought it was all these little beads, and it was cocoons. And so of course when they opened the vault where this dress had been, all these moths flew out, it was amazing. But I thought, that's right when we were editing that lesson and I thought, ah! Anyway, Ellen dressed up like Brigham Young and acted like she was trying to convince us all to participate. And so she had this whole list. This is gonna be the greatest thing and we're gonna grow silk. We're gonna create silk and, and this is all that's necessary. And then she started listing the things and then you just have to do this. And then you just, and it was long and long, but she was like with such enthusiasm. Of course you're gonna to wanna to do this, right? Oh, of course you're, you know, and it was, it was really great. We were all engaged and she gave us all a little tiny silk purse. And it was just Aww. really cute. So you can create a game. Um, a lot of times 
there's a lesson being given um, that is near you, you know, a lesson topic that you can visit. Cove Fort, their traffic increased immensely when there was a Cove Fort lesson. Ellen, when we said the lessons find us, she visited Bluff because a couple from our ward were the missionaries there. And she was shocked to know that there had never been a lesson written about Hole in the Rock pioneers. Hmm. So we have a lesson about Hole in the Rock pioneers. And so that was, you know, that was exciting. Um, and I'm sure they're gonna have more traffic that way. The last lesson is about three communities that during the drought emerged and you could see. So um, uh, Rockport, Utah, if you saw on the news that you could see some of the foundations of pioneer buildings, the man who took those photos with a drone sent them to me so that I could use them in the lesson. St. Thomas, Nevada, and Mormon Island outside of Sacramento. So if you're in those areas, you can, you can visit those. Um, and then, yeah, get a tech savvy person to help you with these things. But interesting lessons, that is the heart of your camp meeting, really. And so if the heart, if you got a bad heart, it's got, you, you gotta repair it. And that can be hard and painful, right? But it can be done for the good of, you know, all of the, the women. Okay, any other questions? We have just a few minutes. When you say the heart of the, of the meeting, I agree. But sometimes the lesson isn't available until an hour because people go on and on and talk. And right. The lesson is supposed to be at the end. The, right? The, right, the lesson is the last thing because it's the grand finale of the meeting. But then it's just, you know, now there's just 10 minutes. And you can tell the body language of the women. They're ready to go home. Yes, and so so this if you are the lesson leader and you are not being given the amount of time that you should be given, um, on our website and there is the um, what's the the order of how the meeting the meeting schedule agenda. yes agenda thank you <laughs> yes and the allotted time make sure that camp captain has that. And, and I visited a group that meets in a Relief Society room and they had that taped to the front of their podium. Really? Yes, yes, so, yes. Um, but enlist the camp captain to, to help you do that. Meetings that start late are frustrated to people that are on time, frustrated. You can start without somebody there. And you know, when our chaplain's not there, somebody else says the prayer, we start. And that teaches people to be on time. You know, we, we start on time and, um, and like I said, if it's a problem with the histories, the histories, the artifacts, sometimes the, the business or the minutes or you know, too much discussion. Sometimes when they read minutes from the previous meeting, the things they're talking about have already long since happened and there's no sense to discuss them. And for our international board, the minutes are emailed out. And if anybody has changes to them, they send that in and then they're approved that way. So you can do that and save some time. You and then you, yes. Our captain sets the mood for our meeting and she gets up and she's precise and she does the blah, 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 and then the next person comes in and precise and precise. And so, well, I mean, we just, we just move on where in the past it's moved on. If you, right, so if you have a camp captain that's having a hard time starting on time and they're very casual about it and, and are not concerned about things, you're right, everybody will follow suit and, and that's frustrating. And so, you know, that's, that's a great comment. Camp captains need to be, you know, right on time and be very structured in, in things. Yes? Our captain will always get up in the middle of my lesson and with the person that's over the refreshments for the time, and they'll go oh. out and do the refreshments so they're done as soon as I'm done. And then I always get the comment, I missed your lesson, I missed your lesson. So how do you handle that? Refreshments shouldn't be so elaborate that they can't just be set out, right? That, that's a hard one too. I would ask, yeah, the captain about that. And it, it, you know, they, they don't need to be that elaborate. Ours aren't, they're usually just cookies or, you know, but yeah, I visited a group and they wheel them out on a cart, you know, 
from the kitchen and, oh, yeah, and so if they're that fancy yeah, yeah they have yeah. like a little mini lunch that's you know I would say no if it you know I wouldn't it should just be simple and and just could be some put of out our ladies when the don't meeting know ends. simple no and and for some women this is that's where they shine right mm -hmm. I can't do a fancy plate like you said, you got a paper bowl with store bought candy, and that's what I have to offer. <laughs> well, it seems, you know, we have one that always goes way over the extra mile, so everybody feels like they have to keep up with Lori, you know? And so, yeah. I'll tell you, this is where everybody's style comes in, right? Were you really disappointed with a paper bowl, or did you get what you needed from this meeting, right? And so I visited a group in California, and the company president. I had met her in Arizona. I was visiting a group in Arizona and speaking at their convention, and she was visiting her sister who said, I can't get together with you um, because I have a big DUP thing. So she came and she said, oh goody, that same person is coming to ours. I can tell them it will be worth coming to, right? But she said, ours are always over the top, just the decorating of the hall so much. And I went to this one in Arizona and it was very simple. And it was just as lovely as could be. And then I realized, okay, I can do this. I can, you know. So if over the top is somebody's gift, great. But if I'm, if I feel like I have to be over the top, that's more stress than, and it's not enjoyable to me. I'm not a big, you know, fancy table display person. It would have taken me longer to set up some sweet, you know, display than it would have to prepare for this. And I have enough time to prepare for this. I had to choose between the two. And if I spend all of my time doing this great display, you're gonna get a lousy breakout <laughs> session. <laughs> Cause I don't have time for both. It would take me forever. So everybody should just bring their strengths and not feel pressured to do something fancy. So yeah, anyway. And I'm, I'm available if you have more questions after. You can email us at any time. We're usually there on Mondays, and if we're not in the middle of something, we'll answer the phone. Um, you can leave us a voicemail, and we'll respond. So, thank you for coming.